Okay, we're back. We're live. Uh, we just had this really fabulous show with, uh, with Governor John Wyhey and Senator Brian Schatz. That was terrific. And then we had uh, Law, Law uh, Across the Sea uh, with Mark Sklav. It was, it's been a great day so far, a great week. And uh, now we have uh, Mina, maybe Marco, <laughs> me, and me on a Monday talking about energy. And uh, we're going to catch up on energy, try to make sense of it today. And uh, maybe we can catch up with Marco, too. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Mina. Thanks, Jay. Nice to be here in Great person. Great to have you. Great to have you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what comes to mind is we have an election coming soon, uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow, for example. Yeah. Um, and, you know, bets seem to be on uh, Hillary Clinton, but, you know, who knows? Uh -huh. uh, we don't know where those red states are going, and, right. um, you know, who knows? It could be a big surprise. I, I keep finding ordinary, reasonable, rational people who say, uh, under stress, under under interview pressure that they're uh -huh. actually voting for Trump. So, can't be sure. Oh, here's, here's, uh, uh, wait, yeah. Uh, Marco, can, can, uh, can you let us call on Skype and then we can click you in, okay? 553-5002. Five, five, three, five, zero, zero, okay, we'll call you in a minute, yeah. So anyway, there's a lot of issues that, that, mm -hmm. that are, you know, national issues about everything in the world I saw on 60 Minutes last night a very interesting mm -hmm. focus group and, you know, m people from both sides of the tracks, all economic groups, all mm -hmm. occupations, all economic levels, um, all unhappy yeah. and mad at each other, mad at the country, mad at the candidates, mad at the parties. Um, we, we, have, we are fragmented and uh, I, somehow I feel this has got to affect energy as an initiative, right. uh, no matter who wins. Well, I, I think you... You know, everybody saw what was happening with the stock market, you know, and it was on a downward trend, um, you know, given the SBI supposedly investigation of Clinton um, and, you know, all that uncertainty that was causing. And now I think it's a little bit more even um, today. Yeah. Oh, but it went up. Yeah. Yeah. And, up. and, you know, that's the uncertainty of the election and how we're being perceived and, you um, um, and, and especially in energy issues, you know, are if someone like Trump gets in, are we going to fall off the wagon and revert back to coal? Right. Um, he was he was there uh -huh. uh, touting coal in the coal country, and you really wonder how serious he was. But if he does that, yes. whoa, yeah. we're going backward a mile a minute. Yeah. So I think you know, climate change issues, um, energy issues, moving towards cleaner energy, you know, those. Those issues are highly reliant on the outcome of this election. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it makes it it makes it hard, you know, to to plan actually. Exactly. Um, you know, one one of the things is, um, you know, so uh, people cannot even visualize what's going to mm -hmm. happen late Tuesday night. Because, you know, there's talk about, well, it's all rigged and, and won't concede, there'll be mm -hmm. con no concession. And, you know, I've been hearing stories about how people are galvanizing for an right. immediate impeachment already yep. following the election. I mean, this is a huge stress on the Constitution, okay. the system, the, the, the public confidence in the system, right. the social compact that we have mm -hmm. all grown up with is now it, somehow it, exa threatened. Exactly. And I, that's what's really sad, that... Um, um, this partisanship and um, divisiveness um, amongst the country um, and how, how do we move forward once this stage is over that we do have a president when you have um, especially um, uh, the Congress saying that you know we're not going to consider if it's uh, Clinton we're not going to consider any Supreme Court appointees were, Even you know, from John McCain said that. Yeah. So that's in the mainstream Republican rank and file mm -hmm. saying things like that. Yeah, so, deadly. So, yeah, well, you know, public service is supposed to be an honorable p profession moving forward, looking out for the public good, solving problems. I mean, I, I wish we could get back to that yeah. and, and rather than this just yeah. um, ugliness. Yeah. And, you know, it, mm -hmm. and it's funny that... Um, uh, elected legislators, public mm -hmm. officials, don't, don't seem to follow the Constitution. If, if, if you don't uh, confirm another appointee in the Supreme Court, mm 
-hmm. any, any side of the tracks. Mm -hmm. That means you're changing the number of judges on the Supreme mm -hmm. Court, mm -hmm. but the number of judges is in the U.S. Constitution. Mm -hmm. You're effectively disregarding the Constitution. Right. Yeah. Um, and if, if I make an oath of office to you know, abide by the Constitution, mm -hmm. support, defend the Constitution, and I ignore it or try to change it unilaterally mm -hmm. without process that way, um, am I in, in, in violation of my oath of office? It's right. rhetorical, but it, I think yeah. it's a real question. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. I think there were a couple of articles in the Washington Post about, you know, does the Senate really relinquish its right um, on um, the confirmation process, you know, by not acting? Yeah. You know, so does that give the president the ability just to nominate someone and have them um, fill the vacancy um, and, and the, the Senate, not by not acting, relinquishes its right to um, uh, qualify someone and so confirm someone. So you know that this week mm -hmm. here, interestingly enough, at the Cancer Center at uh, UH Medical School, mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a conference going on with German companies and government officials okay. here to tell us what Germany is doing on, uh, on energy. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's interesting that for a long time we have seen ourselves, Hawaii has seen right. itself as a leader, a global leader. You know, they will beat a path to our door to find out how we do our energy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure it's that way anymore. Uh, I think Germany is here to tell us what they do in Germany rather than, you know, to yeah. find out what we do here in Hawaii. Uh, uh, of course, it, it's probably going to be a two-way street to some extent. But I'm very interested in knowing what they well, do. Well, you know, um, I was in Germany in May and um, spoke at an international conference and to tell them about the Hawaii experience. And, you know, Germany was very proud because that weekend, um, that the previous weekend, they had hit 100% win. And, you so know... Which depends on how much wind you have, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but... but um, you know, they were very proud of that accomplishment and rightfully so, but you know, their grid is different because they're interconnected. They can, you know, move that power throughout the European um, They have an uh, nations. cable, don't they? <laughs> they have a big cable <laughs> and lots of transmission. Yeah. And so doing it within an island, in, um, especially isolated island units, island grids, is much more difficult. Um, but Germany has um, experimented, provided new technologies in a lot of Pacific Island nations. They've made some investments in Pacific Island nations. Um, for example, um, one of the um, technology developers that's here this week um, did some work in Tonga. And um, and especially in load shifting. But again, Tonga doesn't have, I believe, I've never been to Tonga, but I don't believe it has, you know, the, the, the economic scale that we do, mm -hmm. um, the expectation of reliability that we do. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, for a highly developed economy like ours, you know, not, um, we can't use developing island nations as models for us. But when, one uh, thing seems clear is that Germany does have technology. It, mm -hmm. uh, it, yep. it doesn't have great weather and mm -hmm. it doesn't have great sunshine. Mm -hmm. And for that matter, I don't think its wind is all that mm -hmm. good either, I mean, mm -hmm. in terms of consistent flow of wind. Mm -hmm. But it, it's determined and it, you know, they know how to do mechanical engineering and all that, mm -hmm. and electrical engineering. So they're out here in Tonga, and for that matter, they're out here in Hawaii mm -hmm. yeah. trying to sell their yeah. technology. Yeah. They're trying to make money. Uh -huh. and, and I think, again, you know, uh, the, the technology is advancing very quickly. And, you know, we do provide an excellent test bed, um, you know, especially in an economy like ours that mm -hmm. um, um, uh, with so many different components. So, you know, partnering with them um, in how to integrate and manage the system is really important. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. you know, we, we had a show last week and we talked to the, uh, let's see, he was the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. the German Chamber of Commerce in, uh, um, in I think it was Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Talked, we had the Honorary Council 
uh, here, console mm -hmm. for Germany here in the studio. So this is a, you know, this is a full-fledged effort here. This yeah. is serious business by Germany. And I'm sure they're not limiting it to Hawaii. They're mm -hmm. elsewhere. So <clears throat> the question is, you know, how do we respond to this? Yeah. Uh, you and I know that conferences um, uh, may or may not, you know, actually yield any mm -hmm. ongoing benefit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I wonder if, um, if anybody's really listening mm -hmm. to the Germans who are trying to sell their technology. Uh, and I feel that, you know, that would be a function of how, how, uh, how the utility responds, how the PUC responds, mm -hmm. uh, how industry in general responds. And on that, Nate, on that, you know, I don't, I don't think we got over next era yet. Yeah. I, I think we're still, like, in, tr in shock mm -hmm. over that. And mm -hmm. we, we have to get together and come together. It's sort of like the election, you know after the trauma of the election, can we come together? Right, um, yeah. I, I, I think one of the things that we have to do, Hawaii has to do to move forward, we have to be able to articulate all um, our challenges very clearly so that we find the right technologies to help us move forward. And I don't believe, um, um, how can I say this diplomatically? <laughs> <laughs> you know, in some of the uh, requests you know, uh, we've been reactive to it rather than going out to these um, uh, new technologies, um, businesses, and saying exactly what our problem is and uh, what do you have to, uh, uh, as solutions for us. Yeah. And, and, and do that on a con competitive basis. Well, let me, let me ask you this, Mina. Mm -hmm. You've thought about this for a long time, decades, mm -hmm. and uh, in, one, in one very leveraged, high le leveraged position or another. And you've seen a lot of history go, go by here mm -hmm. uh, on energy in Hawaii. It's been historic, really, uh, on your watch. And here we are, okay, it's mm -hmm. Election Day 2016. So, uh, and I say that only because I think that's a, a stark day also in some ways. Right. If I made you queen, <laughs> if I made you governor, if I gave you all the power in the world, and based on what you know, what you've seen, what you are thinking about now, mm -hmm. what would you do to move the needle ahead right now in Hawaii? If I could go backwards, I mean, and I'm just being really, really truthful here. Next era would be the owners of Hawaiian Electric Company. Mm. And, um, because I think they were a very forward-looking company, and it's really the electric utility that's the driver in this, and um, and in the planning situation, and and in my look at them, they, they appear to be a very um, progressive company that understands um, the evolution of the business model and um, and. Uh, technology moving forward, I, I, I think they were not evaluated fairly and we're going to, consumers are going to pay a high price for that. Mm. And so we, we may make some progress, but we're going to stumble a lot mm. and we're going to pay a higher price for that. Well, that being the case, let's call mm -hmm. it, you know, the Camelot of next era, you know. <laughs> so just assume for with me for a moment that they're here. Uh -huh. uh, they're controlling the utility. They bring all their resources, uh, deep pockets, um, mm -hmm. engineering, whatnot, to Hawaii. How does it go? What, I mean, in, in, in your mind's eye, well, it, it goes to Christmas future. How does it go? Well, I think, you know, the best example that we have, that's a real-life example that we're living right now, is um, the Kauai Co-op. Kauai Island Utility Cooperative. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're very calculated. They're very um, um, conscious of their cost and, and the cost to the, to the member. I'm a member. And, and, um, but um, they're willing to experiment. You know, th th so they're moving forward. Um, you know, taking into uh, consideration advancing technology economics and environmental concerns so I we have a great example in in um, the cooperative yeah, are, um, are you suggesting that a cooperative would be appropriate for the rest of the state no that it's not ownership it's leadership uh -huh. and um, they have um, a very progressive board with um, um, their own strategic plans and their own targets which are higher than the, the um, 
then, the near-term targets are higher than the RPS, mm -hmm. the state mm -hmm. RPS. Mm -hmm. And they have a um, CEO who understands financing really well. And they have um, a COO who understands his system very well mm -hmm. and, and how much renewables they can integrate. They've really had some remarkable uh, progress in Kauai, yeah. haven't they? You yeah. spent a lot of time there, so yeah. you can see it happening. Uh, but mm -hmm. aside from leadership now, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I, I make you leader <laughs> for all this. What, what steps would you take? Mm -hmm. you know, what, what would you focus on in terms of uh, the kinds of renewables, uh, the kinds of technology, um, the kinds of bringing the community together yeah. in a better system? What would you do? I, I, I think right now we have to get our head wrapped around on the, um, the utility side of the meter and the infrastructure investments that are needed on that side. So that's taking the macro approach. If we want transformation, we have to concentrate on the big picture investment, the long-term investment that will get us to um, our targets. Um, what is that, uh, solar farms? Utility scale solar farms, um, more utility scale projects, um, upgrade of the grid, smart meters, and, and so those are major kinds of investments that need to take place on... on Substantial capital expenses. A, exactly, and long term. Yeah. These are the long term attempts. And this is where the ratepayer money and the taxpayer money should be focused. For far too long, we focused on the micro stuff, and, and, and that's good, you know, that, that we, um, we were early adopters in a lot of area. But the small stuff, the individual stuff, is not really, it can help drive transformation, but if we really want to take everyone along, um, whether you have a rooftop solar panel or not, um, the investments have to be made on, on the system, the system the, itself. The, the yeah. larger macro system. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> what about the economics of that? You know, people have gotten mm -hmm. into the in, in my view, the misperception that clean energy is cheap energy, mm -hmm. but somebody has to pay for new infrastructure, new technology. Right. How, how would you handle that as the queen? Right, and, and exactly. That's where the public money should be invested. Public in, money meaning legislative public money. Well, taxpayer money or yeah. ratepayer yeah. funds. Yeah. That's where it should be invested, um, where it can bring the greatest benefits to all um, rather than the individual um, uh, individual stakeholders. And uh, this is where um, the rates have to be adjusted, rate design um, has to move forward. So, you know, people who make the individual uh, investments are fairly compensated for their investments, but not subsidized. Right. So, yeah, the, that's, that's the balancing act that we have to do, and that's what we need to be cognizant of, that if we want transformation, transformation is going to occur in the public infrastructure investments. And whether it's the electric grid, whether it's the, um, uh, the, the communication systems, you know, fiber optics. Sure, um, the, the internet, exit, yes. you know, connecting all the black boxes together. Right, or, or even um, our, our larger water infrastructure our larger fuel infrastructure, you know, these are these take long-term planning. They're major investments, um, and and they're big dollars. Yeah. Now, what about mm -hmm. the socialization aspect? I mean, Hawaii has uh, mm -hmm. evolved into, you know, a, a sort of an ongoing demand for transparency, an ongoing mm -hmm. demand for larger structures to listen to the people and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes that has been useful or at least conciliatory. Other times it has been downright destructive. Mm -hmm. um, how would you handle that as a queen, uh -huh. trying to do these things? I would be a benevolent queen, by the way. I know you would. <laughs> I know you're a, you're a benevolent member of our, of our think tech community anyway, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, actually I've written about this a lot because it's, it's um, you know, especially like in relationship to our grid. You know, it's kind of like the tragedy of the commons. I mean, y you know, you, you can only take so much uh, and, and then you start affecting everybody. And, and so, we, you know, we have to be cognizant of that. You know, capitalism is good. 
you know, it's, it's a good driver for our economy, right? But, but again, it has to be balanced with, um, you know, social responsibility and yeah. that, that we all benefit from, yeah. um, you know, good policies rather than just, if, I don't believe in the trickle-down effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to get people on board in one way or another mm -hmm. and, and handle, you know, the whole socialization aspect of it. And, and this leads me to a uh, discussion of something that's been happening this morning, namely a mm -hmm. meeting of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, mm -hmm. uh, the steering committee specifically, mm -hmm. to determine what are the issues that should be covered in the legislative briefing mm -hmm. that customarily and annually, and this year again, will mm -hmm. take place in the legislature around the opening time, yeah. uh, January 15th or so. Um, so you're familiar with the possibilities that have been raised. Uh, I wonder if we could talk about that, not because it's been decided yet, it hasn't been decided, but at right. least what are the candidates for discussion? Well, I think, you know, I, uh, one, what will likely come up is energy tax credits for energy storage. And I think that's a huge mistake because our existing tax credits include energy storage. And I think if you have a separate tax credit specific for energy storage, you're going to be giving public monies to the same individuals to benefit on their own. And um, we've been spending hundreds of millions of dollars already on you know 20 percent of the population. So, so I don't doubt, given the state that the um, solar industry is in, you know, they're, they're looking for lifelines right now. Um, but I don't believe it's a warranted lifeline. Um, we shouldn't reverse the decision on NEM and that, and that energy metering. Uh, no. We shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, go back and uh, give uh, new in, no. incentive uh, tax credits or anything like that. We, right. should, we should let the market decide. Huh? The, the, the market is broken. Um, okay. And, you know, because this is an area that's heavily subsidized. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've heard people say, well, you know, you're getting all the subsidies to fossil fuel. But again, it, you know, it's, it's benefiting the, the individual side of the meter. It's not, these are public monies being invested in individuals rather than the public as a whole. Um, and, uh, so thinking with you today, it sounds to me like one thing the Energy Policy Forum could consider mm -hmm. uh, as a focus for the legislative briefing is, and you mentioned mm -hmm. it earlier, infrastructure. How do we, what kind of infrastructure should we focus on? How can we get it built? Right. Uh, how can we integrate it, all the pieces together, not only on the one side or the other side, but right. on all the sides, connect it up? And, of course, how can we pay for it? Right. Um, you know, because the utility may not have, the, you know, the, the money. There may not be another next era down the road, at least right. not, not immediately. Yeah. So we have issues. Uh, big issues. Uh, you know, only government can drive these big and facilitate these big public infrastructure projects, um, whether it's roads or um, public transportation, the electric grid, or, um, like I said, wa main water issues, fuel infrastructure. Um, and so w we need to pay attention to that and pay attention to the planning process, which is ne necessary to have continuity. I mean, I I've seen too many good plans get dumped because of an administration change. Or oh, a isn't that the truth? That's so true. Mina, I mean, from your lips, I tell you, that's absolutely true. How do you, but how do you avoid that? Right. It's I the mean, way you, you cannot, work. you cannot plan these big public infrastructure investments according to political cycles. You can't do it in two and four year cycles. You know, this reminds me of the old issue, and mm -hmm. I know it was, it was not successful at the time when Neil Abercrombie first took office. Around the time you were mm -hmm. originally appointed, I think. Yeah. Um, he appointed me. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was the idea of an authority, because mm -hmm. an authority outlives a political cycle. Robert Moses in New York. I, I but I, I kind of disagree with you on that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think we have really good policy out there, but there are some agencies that have to have that continuity. 
One of those agencies is the Public Utility Commission, and that's why commissioners have six-year terms. Um, you know, to allow for that continuity that goes yeah, beyond exactly. political cycles. Yeah. But what about um, the uh, administrative side, the, you know, the operational side, the, call it the, um, the executive side? Right, and, and, and so, I mean, there's a reason why there are civil service positions. I, again, to have that um, um, institutional memory, the, the professionalism in, in moving on. Maybe um, this should be a subject uh, mm -hmm. in the briefing. Yeah. The other thing that comes to me that, that you, know, you know, occurs to me about the briefing is that uh, maybe we need to break down, um, of course, we multiple speakers, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to discuss this and to advise the legislature, but break down the kinds of infrastructure we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So somebody perhaps ought to talk about uh, utility scale solar farms. Somebody ought to talk about utility scale wind farms. Not only the technology of it, but the contractual legal relationships involved in putting them together. Who that, does what? That might be getting down into the weeds, though. Okay. I, I, I think what we're missing here is, you know, a, a bigger picture and how everything is integrated in moving forward. Who speaks? Who, who would you have <laughs> briefing the legislature this year? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, if I knew that, we would have had the agenda all set up already before I got to this, <laughs> <laughs> to our discussion right here. No, it, 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 it's really hard because we're no longer talking about projects. We're no longer talking just about renewable energy generation. I mean, we're talking about an entire ecosystem. Right. And we have um, to see it that way. Yeah. And, yeah. And that, that means that you and I are going to have to have further discussions about this. Mm -hmm. And the steering committee of the Energy Policy Forum is going to have to look at it from that right. point of view. Yeah, and so is the legislature. Yeah, it's, it's no, no longer linear decisions. You do this and you get that. You know, it, it, it's, it's really big. Yeah. And, and we're talking about, you know, these evolutions that are taking place right now rapidly on the technology side. But, you know, as, as you get things off the ground, it's slower. But this is, this is a 30-year plan. Yeah, and we have mm -hmm. to be proactive. Right. Uh, that's Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, <laughs> a legislator who, who dealt in uh, energy, who led the legislature in energy for many years here on Think Tech. On Mina Morita, maybe Marco, and me on Mondays. We'll do this again, right? All right, thanks, Jane. <laughs> thanks.